All right, so 12, uh, last time I found a typo so we couldn't solve. Uh, in a naive Bayes spam classifier, suppose the word inherit is presented in 10% of 100 spam emails and never in the 100 ham emails in the training set. Which of the following assignment of probability would lead to problems? Well, the way that the naive Bayes classifier works is by it computes two types of probabilities. A probability of being a spam is given by uh, probability of seeing one word, right? So, uh, sorry, so it's it's more like, yeah, probably, of, yeah, uh, probably of uh, being a spam is same as a probability of uh, seeing the uh, word uh, inherit uh, in a spam and times probability of another word, uh, whatever, happy, I can't, can't think of anything else. There's some, some bunch of words that appear in the email itself are multiplied and, and after it's it's multiplied, you divide it by some 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 big thing which uh, which is common to both spam and ham, so we don't really care. We only compare these two, right? So when you do the same thing for spam and ham, there's a problem if uh, a word happens to exist in one of the spam or ham type and the other one, it never appears. Uh, because if that happens, then you end up assigning zero as the probability for the ham case. So it's just like, if you assign, uh, if it's a ham, the probability of seeing an inherit is zero. It, once you do that, then no matter what happens, the product will always be zero. And you will never get a result uh, that would uh, factor other words into consideration. So <clears throat> what you have to do is uh, uh, you have to do something called additive smoothing or Laplacian smoothing. So the way you do the smoothing is like usually you say probability of something. Usually you do probability. probability of something equals to how many times you've seen it divided by n, uh, how many uh, emails there are. So it's, this will be like probability of inherit under the condition that you have a spam would be uh, how many how many of spam mails you have, that will be n, and how many times how many of those spam mails contain this inherit, that's your x. So that will be the naive way to encode the probability, but instead of that, people put something uh, called some, some extra thing here, times d, uh, where d is the uh, number of all possible words, uh, and then alpha is some, some number that you choose, usually a small value, or you could even choose a one. So it's kind of arbitrary. Um, so such a, such, a, such a way to, such a way to uh, slightly change the probability, and, and the sole purpose is to make zero never appear, okay? And such a thing is called uh, Additive smoothing, uh, also known known as uh, Laplace smoothing. Okay, because uh, apparently Laplace was the first person to think about such a thing, and <clears throat> as you can see, that's the thing that would be applied here if you uh, assume that d is like two and alpha is one, uh, then the probability will be like that. Now, uh, you could just say inherit spam is 0 0.1. That That's not causing any problems. So, uh, D also is not 
using the additive smoothing because we're just doing 10% as 0 0.1. Uh, but that's not the cause of the problem. The, the most problematic part is the C because once you say probably is 0, then when you do this multiplication, then you would get 0 regardless of any other words that you see in there. So that's why you, you want to say the answer is C. Okay. All right, so now uh, in 18 and 19, these are about uh, Euclidean distance and Manhattan distance. Euclidean distance is the one that you already know. Uh, it's a uh, distance formula is square root of x1 minus x2. This one, I need this to be inside the parenthesis. Plus uh, y1 minus y2. And if this uh, has three features, then you would have another coordinate z, so you do z1 minus z2, and then if you have n features, then you'll just ha keep adding uh, difference of squares, okay? So that's the distance formula that you, you used to know. And, and such a thing is called uh, Euclidean distance. Euclidean distance. And, and therefore, to figure out the distance between these, uh, you just have to compute this and see which one's closest, right? So uh, let's see, four, three. So one point is three comma zero. So three zero wouldn't change. We're going to fix the first one as three zero. But the, then if I want the distance between uh, P A, so distance between P and A will be th three zero and two three. So it would be two and then three so that this is going to be square root of one squared which is one plus three squared which is nine so it's going to be square root of ten actually uh, a better way to do this is instead of drawing the graph you can just plot these points on a grid and you it'll, it'll be a lot easier to see which one is the coldest but uh, for me, it's harder to draw here, so I'll, I'll just keep calculating, okay? But uh, do take some time to plot these, and it's a lot simpler if you just plot and, and see the graph, okay? So if it's 1 and 2, it's going to be uh, 2 squared 4. 4 will be square root of 8. You said we're looking for the closest distance. Yeah, that's why the question is asking. Oh, sorry, it's hard hard to see, right? Yeah. Okay. Can you see it now? Yeah. All right. So it's looking for the closest distance. All right. And then now P to C would be 3, 3. So it would be 3 and then 3. So it will be square root of 9. Which is 3, but we're just comparing, so we'll just leave it like that. Uh, then, with D, it'll be 4, 3. So, 4 and then 3. So, it'll be square root of 10. Okay, question. Which one is closest? B, right? This, this one is square root of 8. That's smaller than the other ones. So the answer will be... Uh, the answer will be this one. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, what about this other one? What is Manhattan distance? The answer was B, right? Yeah, the answer was... Uh, I mean, choice C, which is B. Yeah. Sorry. I, 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 I have a... Python program to shuffle the choices. That's why it looks some somewhat random. Yes, you have a question. Number twelve was C. Okay. Okay. Number twelve was C. Okay. Number twelve was C. Okay. 
Okay. Now let's look at the Manhattan distance. Well, Manhattan distance, uh, it's not like somebody named Manhattan made this. It's really literally the New York City, the Manhattan. And if you ever walked on the streets of Manhattan, you know what, what, what I mean, right? It, there, everything is in blocks. So there's no way to go diagonally. So think about this. If you wanted to go from the location three, so Manhattan distance, let's say uh, small m, m, Manhattan distance of point P to A is done like this. You first, you're at location three is here and you're going to two, three. How are you going to go th get there? Well, Right, that's what's going to happen, right? Yeah. So what you do is uh, you you do uh, you just you just have to go go down one block for to go from address three to two. So I guess uh, in Manhattan they use avenues and and street, right? So if you're at uh, at the junction of third third avenue and uh, zero street that doesn't make sense but let's just say there is a zero street and then the way you get to the second avenue third street is you first go to from three to two so you you go one block uh east or something or west i can't remember uh, and then uh now you go from you're still at zero street second avenue zero street and then you go three uh streets so it's basically just taking the differences and adding them, okay? So you take the absolute values of the differences. Uh, but once again, it's easier to just draw the picture and just see how many blocks you have to walk from one point to another, one grid point to another. Yeah. So in this case, it'll be four, right? The Manhattan distance of P to B is uh, three, three to one, that's two, and zero to two, that's two, right? So it's four. Is that clear? Three and one, you, you have to walk two blocks to match the avenue, and then zero and two, you have to walk two blocks to match the street. So it'll be four. Okay, and then P, and then C would be three, three, and three, zero. What's that? Yeah, it's just three blocks. Yeah. And then M, P, D, how many blocks? I think it's again four blocks. Yeah, four, yeah, you have to walk four blocks. Okay, so what's the answer? C, All right. Okay. Okay, two, two points two, three, and one, two are in group zero. Two points three, three, and four, three uh, are uh, in group one. With k equals to three k nearest neighborhoods algorithm, uh, what is the correct? Uh, what is correct about point two comma one? Okay, with Manhattan distance p belongs to group one, while with Euclidean distance p belongs to group zero. Okay, all right. I, I tried not to draw the picture, but I guess I don't have a choice. All right, so let me let me take some time to draw the picture. Because it... So, let me... You could also just use the equation for this, correct? Yeah, well, it takes too long. It's a it's lot, lot faster to just draw them. Okay, so let me just look it up. So we have 2 comma 3. And let's, let's label as A, and then uh, 1 comma 2, let's label as B, and then uh, 3 comma 3, let's label it as 
3 comma 3 is labeled as C and then uh, 4 comma 3 is labeled as D and P is 2 comma 1 thank you 2 comma 1 is labeled as All right, and uh, let's also, uh, A and B are in group zero, so let me, I think we have to do this. Uh, let's move these to be reds and these to be both purple. Okay, good. All right, that's, that's more like it, All right. So let me uh, make this look. That's not what I want. Okay. I'll just do a snippet of this. No, I need bigger. Okay, good. All right, so here's the picture. Now, uh, let's say we are doing K nearest neighborhood for P. And let's first use the Manhattan distance. So what's the distance between P to B? One. No, you, you go one block this way, one block that way. So it's two, right? And so you, you, for Manhattan distance, you just have to imagine yourself walking on the streets mm -hmm. of Manhattan, right? You so can't go you can't go diagonally. That's what, yeah. So uh, from P to A, two, two. two. How about P to C? Three. It's three four. and then four. Okay, so uh, if you do K nearest neighborhoods with three, what are the three nearest neighborhoods? B, B A, and C, right? So uh, according to the K nearest neighborhood with K equals to three algorithm, P belongs to group zero because this one is group zero, right? Group zero means there are more group zero in the k equals to three nearest algorithm. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So p belongs to group zero. Now let's think about what would happen if we were to use the Euclidean distance. So for the Euclidean distance, I guess that doesn't really change. See, p to b is square root of two. This is two. This is square root of five. Right, yeah, yeah. it's further. So, so still the, the nearest one is BAC, so uh, it's still group zero. So in either case, it's going to be group zero. So, oh, uh, if, if we do Euclidean distance, Euclidean distance is like one square, it's Pythagorean theorem, one square plus two squared, and then you take the square root. One squared is one, two squared is four, four plus one is five, square root of five is this distance PC. But you don't even have to do the calculation. Just draw straight lines and see which one is largest. Like this is the, the farthest. So when you do k equals to 3, you, you're still going to be stuck with b and c. Now, so while the answer is ob obviously c, and as I said, it's, it's much faster to draw the graph than to calculate individually. Just take too long if you, if you calculate individually, all right? Formulas are not the, not always the best. Okay. All right, uh, but uh, it, there are cases where, depending on which distance formula you choose, uh, it will be classified in different ways. Okay. All right. Two points, uh, two, three, and one, two are in group zero, and two points, three, three, uh, are in group one. What is the are these the same points? Two, three, one, two. Yeah. Two, two, comma, three, one, comma, two. Oh, yeah. Three, three. Okay, great. So these are the same points. So we can still use this. All right. Okay, good. Let me then move it over here. Will you put the marked up version of the... I will, yeah. Okay, so you have... Uh, 2 comma 3 and 1 comma 2 in group 0 is still the same thing. 
what is the silhouette score of point A using Manhattan distance? All right. So let me first make sure this one is tight square. Okay. So you have to know how to do the silhouette score. And it's computed by the following formula. It's, uh, it's 1 minus A over B in most cases, uh, where A is the uh, farthest distance within cluster and B is the closest distance uh, outside the cluster from a given point, from a chosen point. Okay. Now, uh, this is this is when a is a is less than b, which is what you would want uh, if it's clust clustered well. Well, but if a is bigger than b, then Scylla score is computed as uh, b over a minus 1. Okay, So that's how it, it's done. And uh, because here a is smaller than b, this is a number that's, uh, that's smaller than 1. Notice that because a and b are both distances, they can't be negative. So you're subtracting a number that's smaller than 1 from 1. So this value will be between 0 and 1. Similarly, you can see that this value will be between negative 1 and 0. So what you see is that silhouette score is always between negative 1 and 1. And if you wanted the silhouette score for A, so let's try to do the silhouette score for A. So for silhouette score of A, A what, would, what would that be? This would be, what's the the farthest distance from A. Well, there's only one point, which is B, right? And uh, I have two questions, one using Euclidean, one using Manhattan. This one's Manhattan. So what's the Manhattan distance from A to B? Two, two okay? So uh, so for, for this one, so uh, I should say for SA, A is equal to uh, two. And then B is equal to what? B is, no, uh, it, A, oh, no. the closest distance. There's no P in the question, sorry. Uh, P was for this other question. Right now we only have four points. So uh, the closest distance from the other outside the cluster is one because it sees the closest that's not in the same, same class as A. So the closest distance is one, right? So you have B equals to one, and therefore, which formula do we use? Yeah, A is bigger than B, so uh, that means S, we have S of A equals to B over A minus one, because A is bigger than B, so you get one, oops, you get one over two minus one, which is equal to negative one half. Okay, that's the silhouette score. Uh, how about if you use uh, for using Manhattan distance? Okay, what if you use Euclidean? Let's think about that. Uh, so, by the way, I think I made a mistake here. These should be. Two. Oh, um, the next question is 
Just a minute. Maybe. Just a minute. Silhouette score. Uh, maybe I'm supposed to use the farthest. Let's see. Just give me a moment. Oh, sorry, sorry. I I, I realized that uh, this is not the correct definition. So, uh, A is the mean distance within cluster. So, A is the. Sorry, let me start again. Right. So, what is the silhouette score? Score. So it's one minus A over B, where A is the mean distance within score, uh, within cluster. Okay, and B is the closest mean distance uh, outside the cluster, okay? Now, that this is somewhat confusing. Uh, this is assuming that uh, there are, so let me just put the parentheses around closest. And uh, the reason I say uh, closest mean distance outside the cluster is because uh, you may have several clusters. So in this example, you just have two clusters, but you may have a third or fourth cluster somewhere. In that case, you just uh, keep taking averages with the other ones, okay? So, uh, yeah. Okay. So now let's let's go back. Uh, so that's... that's uh, Uh, so you use 1 minus A over B if A is less than B. But then uh, if A is greater than B, still uh, you use B over A. Okay, so uh, since you just have one one element, this, this is the mean distance. Okay, there's only one distance. If you have an average of just one item, it's just that, right? So A is 2. Yeah, so A is 2. But for A to C and D, what is that? Yeah, so you have B equals to one half of one plus two. Okay, so that's going to be what? Three over two. Okay. All right, now which formula do we use? Do we use uh, 1 minus A over B or B over A minus 1? B over A minus 1 because A is bigger, right? So now we have to do S of A equals to 1 minus, uh, no, B over A minus 1, which is equal to 3 over 2, and then divided by 2, okay, minus 1, so that's going to be 3 quarters minus 1, which is negative 1 quarter, and therefore, when it's uh, negative 1 quarter, the answer is C, okay. So, for B, why is it 1 half times 1 plus 2? Like, where do you get the 1 plus 2 from? Oh, uh, distance from A to C is 1, right. distance from A to D is 2. Okay. And you're taking the average of it. So the mean distance of the total outside the cluster. Yeah, mean mean distance of the total. A mean distance of the cluster outside of itself. So then why wouldn't it be like one half of two? 
I am taking average of one and two. How do you take averages? You add all the numbers and you divide well, by the numbers. I'm thinking that the distance of the outside cluster is two from our point A. At point A to this other cluster, mean distance from point A to items in this cluster is one and then two. Okay. So you, you take the average, that's what you get. Okay. All right, so the, the answers, answer is now uh, negative one-fourth. Now let's try to do the same thing for Euclidean. Okay. So using Euclidean, uh, now what's A? Now with the Euclidean distance, what is it? Yeah. Uh, for 22, you like to say Euclidean? Euclidean. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, because, well, 21 and 22 are identical. Oh, yeah, that, that's the old one. I, I sent the new one today. Oh, okay. I, I noticed that, sorry. Yeah. So the second one is Euclidean. Right? Okay, so you have Euclidean, and then uh, B is equal to well, Euclidean distance, when it's on a on the same, if, if x, x or y coordinates are the same, then Manhattan distance and Euclidean distance are not different. So B would still be 1 half of 1 plus 2, which gives you 3 over 2. Now, this time, which formula do we use? SA is? Yeah, this time a is smaller, right? Square root of 2 is 1.4 1, 1. something, right? So s a would be 1 minus square root of 2 divided by 3 over 2, which is 1.5. Yeah, so let me just rewrite this as 1.5. Yeah. Uh, can somebody do this with a calculator for me? 0 point something, 0... Zero point five seven. Zero point zero point zero five seven. Zero five seven. Okay. All right. So which one is it? D. Yeah, D. So why is a square root two? Oh, it's a Euclidean distance. Okay. Hit the grain theorem. One square plus one square, and then you take the square root. Okay, if a clustering algorithm used to is used to cluster a given data set, which is true about the average silhouette score? Can silhouette score be higher than one? No. Yeah. Because we just saw saw the formula. It can only be between negative one and one. Is silhouette score always positive? No. No, we just had the case when it was negative. So it's either B or C. They're directly contradicting each other, so one would be better than the other, okay? But if you go back and see what Silva score is doing, it's, it's saying that basically A is the distance within the cluster, and B is the, like the distance from outside the cluster. You, if, you're, if your clustering is done well, you would expect that the, the within cluster should be closer together, so A would be smaller, right? And then uh, distance from outside the cluster will be big, right? So uh, you, you kind of ha have this intuition that when A is a lot smaller than B, then the cluster is done well, okay? So <clears throat> now I just gave you the silhouette score of one point, but what really goes on is you can take the silhouette score for every point in a cluster and take the average of the silhouette scores, and you can just uh, uh, plot those for uh, for each. And then, uh, if the the silhouette scores have 
value is close to one, then you you know that that cluster is clustered well. Okay. Uh, other clusters, if their average is uh, small or even negative, uh, those are bad. Okay. So, uh, or you can just plot each cluster score for each point from least to the largest. That's an, also a way to see the, see the score. So for for those, uh, we see that the close the higher the silhouette score is, the closer the high silhouette score is to value one, it's clustered better. Okay, so the answer is C. Uh, in the k-nearest algorithm, what happens when higher value of k is used? Now we are sorry to jump from topics to topic. Uh, the previous one was clustering algorithm. What, what clustering algorithms are there? K means. K means N? PCA. No, PCA is one of the unsupervised ones, but it's not a clustering algorithm. It's a DB scan. DB scan is the other one that we learned. Yes? Uh, just a question about the previous problem. Is the silhouette score just A over B, or is it the one minus? One minus A over B. So when A is small, close to zero, and B is big, then A over B will be close to zero, where so the silhouette score will be close to one. Oh, so you want the number you're tracking to be lower, is that what it, okay. So you want the silhouette score to be as close to one as possible. Okay. Yeah. So you want the high cluster uh, silhouette score, something like 0 0.9, or even 0 0.7 or 8. Those are still good numbers. Okay. All right. Uh, 